This is now God's glory in man. 1 John 1 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this is a, a, a reiteration of the work of the Lord. He chose us. He gave us power to become sons of God, born of God by the Spirit, because he was God's word made flesh. And we saw his glory. And so he prays for us. Jesus prays for us to become and that we would have this power to become sons of God. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6. We'll dilate this a little more. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ, Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here it is. This is what God, he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. We were in darkness. He shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we with all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So as we continue, and the Lord is giving us power to become children of God, sons of God, then we behold the glory of the Lord by the Spirit and are changed into his image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. God does this work. We stay focused on God. I just want to share with you an experiential revelation I had. Uh, and uh, there were several, uh, several days where the presence of God would come into my room when I was sleeping and I had all these visions, night visions and revelation. But one of the ones that was the most incredible was Jesus came and he stood next to my bed and he was very ordinary looking. He had sort of olive skin. He was not, had didn't have real fine features. They were a little bit coarse, not real coarse, but he had dark brown hair and olive colored skin and his eyes but he was beautiful he was plain but beautiful I, I don't I'm trying to convey how I saw him he was not the kind of earthly beauty uh, that we think you know beauty the beautiful people are and when I there was terror all around in my room because I had a visitations of demonic powers lions and black panthers and the terror, there was terror all around. And I knew that Jesus was telling me, he was communicating to my spirit saying, the only safe place is to look into my eyes. And as I looked into him, his eyes, they became pools of liquid love that, that were endless. They went on forever. You could never see all the way through them, they continued throughout all eternity. They were unfathomable liquid pools of love. And this is how we behold him and are changed as we continue to keep our eyes on him. 
Uh, that's the only safe place. We don't keep our eyes on the things of this world or the passing moments or other people or men or our, these all can become idols in their teachings. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 15 For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the same thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. Though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding weight, eternal weight of glory. So these afflictions are working in us for God to be glorified while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So these afflictions that come into our life are to work a work in us that, that brings the glory of God, the eternal weight of glory that God is glorified. Jesus was glorified by doing the work, going to the cross, dying for those he, you know, who didn't even know him. While we were yet sinners, he died for us, losing his life for this, our sakes. For he loved us so much that he gave, God gave his only begotten son to take the place for our sins, to give us eternal life. Now, how are we going to put on this uncorruptible? Let's look at uh, this process and how it happens is described in 1 Corinthians 15, 41 through 57. All right, we're talking about how God's glory is going to be uh, uh, worked in us. And one of the ways we just discussed was through afflictions. Afflictions, afflictions, yes. Light momentary afflictions. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Now we know by the previous uh, teachings in this series that Jesus showed us that he was glorified when he raised himself from the dead, and when he raised Lazarus. All right, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. What is that? The body. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, which is Yeshua, Jesus, was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now I say this, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Here, this is completely the antithesis of what one would think. First, you are born in a, a corruptible body, and the second Adam comes along, and you are raised a spiritual body. You are in dishonor from worldly things, but God will raise you in honor. You are in weakness, but God will raise his power by the Spirit. You are a natural body that has got to die and be raised a spiritual body. There is a natural and a spiritual body. The first Adam is the living soul. That's the natural. But the last Adam is the quickening spirit. Now, it's not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. So our, our, our 
spirit man that we are born with in Adam, our natural nature. That's natural. Afterwards, when Jesus comes, the second Adam comes and we receive his work, we become spiritual. First man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And those who are earthy, they are also earthy. And those who are heavenly, they are also those which are heavenly. And hence, we have the title of the book, The Heavenly Man. Uh, this Chinaman who wrote this. He is the heavenly man. We are the heavenly creatures if we are born of the spirit. And we have borne the image of the earthy. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's how we know. We look at him and we are changed from glory to glory. We are talking about the glory of God. Now, the, your flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Therefore, your flesh and blood is corrupting and corruptible. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That means we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But, thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ as we continue to behold him. Let's look at the scripture in Galatians six fourteen. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Let's talk about this. I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I must have my total dependency upon God, and he must uh, have his complete will and way in my life. First Peter 4, 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice, inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. First Peter 5.10 But the God of all grace, who has called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a little while, makes you perfect, establishes, strengthens, and settle to you, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And our concluding scripture for this segment on how God will glorify man, Revelation 1 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes with the clouds, 
and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen, him the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty, amen, come, Lord Jesus.